Hey guys and girls, what's up? Welcome to another episode of QC Fishing. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about uh, leader knots. What are they? When would you use them? Uh, and then I'm gonna go over my two favorite leader knots that I tie, when I'm gonna tie each one, and uh, kind of the differences between them. So stay tuned, I hope you guys learned something. So leader knots, let's talk about leader knots. What is it? It is a knot that you use to tie together two different types of line, your main line and your leader line. Why would you even be using a leader in the first place? Well, uh, some of the times you're using them, uh, you're using your two different lines for different purposes. So there's two main reasons that people are using leaders and leader knots. Um, you're like, why, why would you even change your line if you're gonna change it in the last couple of feet? Why wouldn't you just use that as your main line? Never have to worry about tying a knot. Well, sometimes you want to take advantage of two different types of line to really make your bait work better and so you can catch more fish and land more fish. And the first reason that people really use that is when they're fishing a topwater like a spook or a popper. Um, a lot of time people are going to be using braid as a main line for that because they can cast it a lot further. There's no stretch in it at all so you can really work your bait the exact same way 100 feet out on your cast as you would be able to right next to the boat. So that's the main reason people use braid for their main line, but they want to make sure that their bait's not getting fouled up because, because there's no stretch in it. You can work your bait too hard, get your bait, get your line wrapped up in your hooks, foul your whole cast up. It's also, uh, it's also acts as kind of a shock absorber, your leader line. A lot of people, a lot of time people use a uh, monofilament or fluorocarbon for their leader line. And those do have stretch unlike braid. So it kind of acts as a shock absorber. Um, if you were to set the hook on straight braid, as soon as you saw a fish bite it, you might lose that fish. It might come off because your reaction time was too quick, didn't give the fish enough time to get the bait in its mouth, get the hooks in its mouth, and get hooked properly. Um, so being a shock absorber is one reason. Uh, another reason is that uh, if you're in clear water, right? So braid, like I said, it's stretch resistant, or it doesn't stretch at all. It's always opaque. That means you can't see through it. It's always yellow pink green black it's always a color and if you're in really clear water fish get used to seeing this line and if you go to a leader line like mono monofilament or fluorocarbon those are see-through so fish aren't going to be able to see that as well um and that's well, that's why people um will use that um you're like well if you're in clear water why don't you just use the main line of all fluorocarbon some people do um there's no problem with that um Braid is just, braid as a main line is really sensitive because there's no stretch in it. Um, so that's why people like it. You can use it to see bites on top of the water. It'll float. So if, you're see, if you see your bait going down, you can actually sometimes see your braid jump whenever a fish bites it. Um, so that's, that's kind of why people use braid. Another reason is that um, fluorocarbon and monofilament will actually get way more line twist, in my opinion, than a braid to fluorocarbon or braid to monofilament leader. Um, you can see whenever you're throwing a drop shot, your bait will be spinning in the water. You're going to get a lot of line twists from that. And I, I've seen in my personal experience that all the line twists actually ends up in the leader. So if I can, if I can only mess up 10 feet of line instead of my whole spool of line, I'd much rather do that and then maybe retie once or twice a day, uh, to make sure that I get all my line twist out and nothing goes bad. Um, so those are a couple of the reasons that people are using leaders and leader knots. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on and talk about the two knots that I tie. I'm going to show you guys how to tie them and when I use uh, each one. The two knots that I use for tying my, uh, my main line to my leader line. Um, these are both going to be for a braid to a fluorocarbon or braid to a monofilament leader. Um, the two knots that I tie are an FG knot, and I think it's called an Alberto, or it's a it's a modified Alberto knot. Um, I I have never seen anybody tie it. Some people tell me it's an Al a modified Alberto. Some people tell me it's a single uni knot, but I don't think it's either of those. I've looked at a lot of pictures. It, to me, it's something different. Um, so what's the difference between them? Why would I tie these certain knots? Um, both of the knots that I just told you guys about, the FG knot and the modified Alberto. Um, they're both really, really skinny. Uh, it, it wraps the braid around the mono, or wraps the braid, the main line around the floor covering the monofilament only once or twice. So you're not getting a really bulky, um, bulky knot. And 
when you have a bulky knot, it can have some trouble going through your guides on both a spinning rod and a casting rod. So if you can have a, um, a skinnier knot, that's always going to be better. Um, both these knots are both going to be really strong. Uh, a FG knot is stronger in my opinion, and that's the one that I tie uh, most of the time. Like I'm rigging up for a tournament right now. I'm going to be tying this FG knot up, and this is what I'm hopefully going to use in the tournament. Um, it, it takes a while, so it takes it probably takes me a minute and a half, two minutes, two and a half minutes to tie sometimes. But it is really strong. I know that it will not fail. Um, the modified Alberto knot I know is strong. I can tie it in five seconds, but I don't have as much trust in it. Sometimes, sometimes like once in a blue moon, it will slip. It's um, if tons of money is on the line, I'm not going to be trusting the uh, Alberto knot. But um, if I'm Tying up on the boat when I'm not on the water, I'm gonna be tying the FG knot. But if something happens in the tournament and I don't want to waste any time, that's when I can tie the modified Alberto knot, save some time, get back fishing, and I still have. I don't want to say I don't have any trust in it because I still have a lot of trust in it because that's the knot I use for a really long time. But I don't trust it as much as I would trust the FG knot. So those are kind of the main time. Those are the two knots that I would tie. Those are the differences between um, when I would use them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the FG knot and talk about it. So the FG knot, um, like I said, it's a hard knot. A lot, of pro, a lot of pros don't even know how to tie it. They always mess it up. Uh, hopefully today I'm going to make it simple for you guys. Uh, kind of talk you guys through what I see people doing wrong, what I sometimes do wrong, um, and the ways to get around it. Uh, I tie it a little differently than a couple people, um, and I, I've never, ever had a problem with it if I tie it right. Um, I think my my line will break before my knot will break, which is pretty crazy. Um, so the FG knot, if you can imagine, you're use it's it's gonna sound it's gonna sound weird at first, but I'm using I'm wrapping the leader line. In this case, I'm gonna be using fluorocarbon. I'm wrapping the leader line around the main line, the braided line. I'm wrapping the fluorocarbon around the braided line, so that the braided line will be wrapped around the leader line. And you're saying that like you just said two opposite things but uh, I say that now but when the knot is over you're gonna have the braid wrapped around the fluorocarbon and it's gonna be a single single wrap so uh, it's it's got a lot of friction in it so it's not gonna it's not gonna come apart that easy um, but it does it does end up taking a little bit of time to tie because I end up doing I actually end up doing 40 40 wraps and four knots at the end of it uh, just to make sure everything's tight. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of guys walk you guys through it. Hopefully, hopefully it'll show up. Uh, but I'm gonna walk you guys through it. So to start out with the FG knot, um, there's a couple things that I'm gonna do just to get it started. Um, I actually have my reel on my rod, and I'm gonna be using my rod to tie this knot. Um, one thing that a lot of people do wrong is you want it taut, but you don't want it tight. If that makes sense. So I'll go over that. I'll show you guys exactly what some people do wrong. I'll show you what it looks like, and then I'll show you uh, what I do. So I've got my I got my braided line on my reel. I've got it on my rod. I'm gonna tie a loop in the end of my line, and uh, I'm gonna tie a loop in the end of my line just to get it started, just to hold it in place because you want you want everything to be similar. So I'm gonna double my line, double it back, cross it, and it's pretty much the starter shoelace knot. So now I've just got a loop, right? This is gonna end up getting cut away, so we're not even using this, but I'm gonna come down here, come down here to my reel, wrap it around the reel handle, close my bail, I'm gonna start reeling it a little bit, so I have it. So you can see, I have it taut, but not tight. My rod's not bending at all. This is taut, not tight, and this is how we're gonna start start or not so this is 10 pound if you guys are curious this is 10 pound braided line i don't know what brand it is i changed brand a lot um and i've got this going to cigar eight pound in visex this is gonna be my leader line right off the bat where i just took it out of the spool there's a there's a little cut in my line so i'm gonna cut that out you want to make sure that everything is right in this and some people tie their some people have trouble with light line and their knots burning, uh, making their line weaker. But 
I've never had a problem with that. If you tie it right, your 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 line will break before the knot will break. So we've got we've got the line connected to our reel. We're gonna turn our drag down. It's gonna be pretty loose, pretty loose. I'm gonna reel back up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the floor carbon. I don't know if this is gonna be hard to see. I'm gonna do it in a sec. I'm gonna make sure you can see it in a second. So we've got our floor carbon. We're gonna lay it. So we've got our braided line, we've got our floor carbon. I'm gonna take like six inches of floor carbon, lay it on top of the braid, and then I'm gonna pinch it. I'm a couple inches away from our knot over here. Maybe I'll move it a little further, but I'm a couple inches away from our knot. Then what I'm gonna do is, it's sitting on top of the line right now. I'm gonna take this, I've got my pinch, I'm gonna wrap it under, underneath the braid. That's one. So you can see, I just made my I just made my braid twist a little bit. The next thing I'm gonna do is pinch it. After every loop, I'm gonna pinch it. Next one, we're gonna do two. We're gonna go under the left side, and then we're gonna pull the floor carbon. I'm pulling this floor carbon towards you guys, making this braid wrap around it. Um, I'm the reason I want to keep my line taut is because I want these these wraps to be tight around the floor carbon. If my line is too tight, when I wrap the floor carbon around, the floor carbon is gonna keep spinning. If I keep my line just taut, uh, I'm gonna make sure the braid wraps, and that's exactly what we want. If you guys can notice, I'm also pulling, a little, little more line out, I'm also pulling this braid towards me, and as I wrap, the wraps are going this way, and the reason I'm pulling it towards me is because I want all the wraps to go this way so it's a clean, flat knot that uh, won't bunch up. So we just did two, we're going to do three. Wrap it under, pull it tight, pinch it. Wrap it under, pull it tight, pinch it. Wrap it tight, wrap it, pull it tight, pull it under. And so as, as I'm wrapping it, my braid's getting tighter and tighter. So what, that's why I said we're going to turn our drag down a little bit. I'm just going to pull a little bit of line out. Still got it taut. Still got it taut, not tight. And we're going to keep going. Next one. Wrap it, pull it tight towards you. Wrap it, pull it tight towards you. Pinch it. Wrap it, pull it tight towards you. Pinch it. Wrap it, pull it tight. Pinch it. And then every, every couple wraps, I'm going to pull a little bit of line out. And I'm gonna end up making 40 wraps, so I'm gonna keep going. Maybe I can fast forward it. But I'll show you guys right here. Maybe you can see it. My knot's getting longer. The wraps are going in the same direction and they're going, they're getting longer and longer. Our, our knot is getting longer. So I'm gonna keep going until I get to 40. So I always end it on an even number. I'll show you guys my knot right here. This is about maybe 30, 32 wraps or something like that. I wasn't really counting, but you can see it's getting long. I'm always gonna end it on an even number. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pinch it. I'm gonna unwrap my line from my reel. I'm gonna cut this little, cut this little loop off that I tied to tie it to my reel. What I'm gonna do, so I've got the tag end and I've got my main line right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tag end of my braid, I'm gonna wrap it around both my main line and that floor carbon. I'm gonna stick my finger in it, and then I'm gonna tie an overhand knot over both lines. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull on it with the I'm gonna pull on it with the leader line.
make sure make sure everything's tight these next knots are really important to make sure that nothing comes undone so I was I was try to make sure that I'm tying it as tight as possible then I'm gonna do this exact same thing so I've got then I'm gonna do the exact same thing I'm gonna do two overhand knots so I've got my tag end of my leader line and my main line of my braid I'm gonna wrap it around both of them stick my finger in it tie a knot Pull it tight, make sure everything's good. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two overhand knots, but I'm gonna tie it only with the braid. This floor carbon, this floor carbon line, I'm just gonna leave that hanging out. I'm gonna fold it back over if I can. Fold it back over, and I'm just gonna tie two overhand knots with my braid. This is to make sure that that floor carbon doesn't slip out whenever we're fishing, whenever whenever it's hitting up against the guides. So that was one. Now I'll tie two. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test test it I'm gonna pull it back and forth not super hard it was only eight pound line but I'm gonna make sure that anything that would have slipped slipped because sometimes the floor carbon might slip up a little bit but that's all right we just want to make sure it would slip only enough to make it not go through or if the floor carbon slips it would only slip a little bit and now that it's not gonna slip anymore we're gonna cut it really really short we're gonna cut this tag end really short you're not gonna see that tag end then when I cut the tag end of the braid So you can see, let me move it back and forth, see if I can t focus it. But that is the FG knot. So this is going to be the FG knot. Uh, like, like you just saw me, it takes a little bit of time to tie. As you get better and better with it, you're going you're gonna to get faster and faster at it. I'm going to reel some line up. I always like using like maybe like 10 feet, 10 feet a liter line. That's what I like doing. Uh, and I'm just gonna just gonna tie it off on my rod, and I'm gonna grab my other rod, and I'll show you guys the modified Alberto knot. I don't know if it is the modified Alberto knot; it's just the knot that I tie. It reminds me of a clinch knot um, that you tie to tie your tie your bait. Um, so, like I said, we're still gonna have this exact same line. This is a 10 pound braid. We're going to eight pound fluorocarbon. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the fluorocarbon and gonna double it over so I've got three in I'm gonna pinch it I've got three inches of tag end in my main line what I'm gonna do is pinch it pinch it like an inch up then I'm gonna come over and take my braided line I'm gonna stick it from the bottom up and then I stick my finger in there so my finger is actually pinching that braid to the back and what I'm gonna do is just wrap it I'm gonna wrap it seven times and I'm going up up so in your in your guys' view I'm going that way and I wrap it like seven times sometimes we do it like nine times it really doesn't matter but I would go above seven so I was like maybe seven you see it's kind of a flat it's kind of a flat knot right there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it from the bottom going back to the top I'm gonna wet this one, pull it down, and you can see the wraps are starting to tighten down. That was it. It's way easier. You can I <clears throat> I can tie it in three, five seconds, something like that. It's very easy to tie. Um, 
Then you could just cut your tie again short, just like we did with the last one. We made sure it wasn't going to slip. If you guys know what the name of this knot is, the real name for it, make sure to let me know below. But that is the, what I call a modified Alberto knot. It's pretty much just a clinch knot. You're making a loop with your fluorocarbon, wrapping your braid around it, and that's it. Um, like I said, the FG knot's going to be the main one that I tie uh, when I have time to. But if I don't have time at a tournament, I'm on the water, the Alberto knot is going to be the one I'm going to tie. I'm going to do three poles a line. And that's it. So we just learned about uh, leaders, leader knots, when you would use them. And we learned the two different ones that I tie when I use them. So if you guys are braid guys and you wanna, you're fishing in clear water, you're fishing in top water or something like that, maybe you could try using one of these braid, uh, braid to mono, braid to fluorocarbon knots that we just learned today. So, so I just want to say thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.